Well, dang it, looks like somebody got seriously injured. That is very not cool. And it's a Blackhawk again. And he's dead. He died. That is very, very upsetting. He stalled his wing and then pounded into the ground. And that is yet another death at a fly-in that absolutely did not need to happen. It's very, very, very upsetting. I actually saw that happen. I saw the wing stall, but I didn't want to think that was he was actually flying. It looked like he was up flying. But he literally stalled the wing into the ground and it's a total piece of crap Blackhawk wing. And he's got no crumple zone, that's it. I mean, it doesn't make much of a hit to your spine and that's it, you're dead. That is very, very upsetting. Yet another death for absolutely no freaking reason other than they scammed him into getting the wrong gear and he didn't have any training whatsoever. That's just sad. The guy just doesn't have a chance. He just doesn't know because these guys tell every lie they can make up to try and come up with some reason why you don't need a flat top. And it's a big load of crap. Another freaking death for absolutely no good reason. That is very, very frustrating. That is messed up. Hey, the I don't know if you know, but a guy's dead right there. That's his truck. Yep. He was the guy we were just talking to. Yep. A few minutes ago. So you knew. Yeah. Well, I found out right as you were taking. Yeah, him. I actually saw him stall into the ground. Did you really? Yeah, but his body's over there, and they just got a blanket over it. Oh my gosh, Del. It's freaking un. Freaking because he's on a Blackhawk and he doesn't have any proper training. I literally saw him stall his wing, but I couldn't think that was somebody flying. I almost thought for a second somebody was just kiting because I saw the wing stall, and he went straight down. Just boom. And with no crumple zone, it just doesn't. How high was he up? What? Did you see how high he was? He was just above the houses. Really? So he wasn't high? So, yeah, he probably stalled. His body, I would say, was maybe 40 feet. That's it, all? it was low enough. 40 feet? Yeah. It was low enough. He was maybe even below that. Because I almost thought for a second that it was someone kiting. I was like, you know, I didn't want to really connect that somebody had fallen out of the sky. Because I saw him stall straight into the ground. The wing just went straight down. Time to burn that wing. Freaking unbelievable. Yeah. I'm kind of heart sick, actually. And that's upsetting, man. And it's just because they don't have the right gear and they don't have proper training. That's so frustrating. Yeah. Hang it. Okay. Anyway, I didn't know if you guys knew that. It's very upsetting. Over and over, death after death. And it's all because they don't have even the most basic ability to control their glider. 
and they're flying horrible crap gear like Blackhawk. Just absolute total freaking garbage. I mean, if your glider stalls over and over on the ground when you're trying to kite it, then what makes you think it's not gonna stall in the air? It is so upsetting when there's absolutely no reason for that to happen. If you just get proper training and you pass super training, go through super training and keep going through it until you pass. It's not just go through it and then go, oh, well, I know how to kite so I can fly. No, you get each piece, you learn how to fly, and you do it the right way, and you get the right gear. I mean, I have over 11,000 flights, and I've never even been injured. And I have stalled straight out of the sky on a totally uncertified glider, but I had 18 inches of crumple zone, and I got up and walked away from it. No crumple zone, it just does not end well. It doesn't take much of an impact to break your back or die. There's just no reason. It's like cars. They finally mandated that you have crumple zone in cars and seat belts to hold you in that crumple zone. And it's no different in paramotors. At some point, you're going to smack into the ground, even if you do know what you're doing. And you either have crumple zone and a glider that's going to control your descent rate, or you don't. That's the basic MO that happens over and over and over. You get these guys out there pretending to be instructors that don't have a freaking clue what they're doing. They have guys run like 10, 15 forward launches and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's put a motor on you. Now you can go fly. No, that's not how it works. You haven't even developed the reflexes to not stall your freaking glider. You should have the feel built in. I mean, if you're bearing your brakes to your ankles in the sky, something is seriously wrong. Then, of course, on top of that, you got uncertified height hook-in points. So if you stuff brakes, those gliders will whip stall right out of the sky. That's what happened. Freaking unbelievable. There's just no reason for it. It's so sad for the guy and the guy's family when, you know, just getting training would have made the difference and getting a flat top that has the safety systems and a certified glider that was certified height hook in points. So if you bury the brakes, look, I buried the brakes. Did the glider stall? No, because it's a freaking dominator and I got certified height hook in points. Want to see it again? Boom, brakes. No, did the glider stall? No, it did not stall because it's a freaking dominator. Boom, it's a dominator. So if you accidentally bury the brakes, it's not gonna stall. Now, if you hold the brakes at your ankles for over eight seconds, then yes, it will stall, but it's not gonna stall from just accidentally pulling too much brakes. It's just so frustrating to see over and over and you got these liars out there telling every lie they can make up about the best in the world, you know, really taking the time to train people properly. And they're trying to trick people, scam people away from the best instruction and safest gear in the world to train with jump freaking moron who doesn't have even the most basic skills themselves. And then they push the worst horrible crap on you. It's just a freaking nightmare. And the reality is, the Blackhawk costs almost the same as a flat top. They're within five, eight hundred bucks from the best unit on the market to the absolute worst garbage you can get. There's very little price difference. The big difference is the glider, because they're selling a fake Chinese copy of a 30-year-old glider. You know, they're making these things for 500 bucks and dumping them onto the market to people who are just don't know any freaking difference compared to the best glider on the market, which is 3,800 bucks. Big difference. That's where your price difference is, is in the wing. The paramotors are all fairly similarly priced, but wings, there's a huge difference between the absolute best, safest, most highest performance wing on the market and a heinous pile of junk. But I have five $800 wings in stock 
but the difference is they're certified. You get like a lower end APCO, and yeah, you can get cheaper wings. So it's not so much about the price. It's about knowing what to get and dealing with people that care more about your life than they do about making money and making a sale. Same crap over and over and over. And they tell every lie they can make up. Oh, it's Dell ruining flying sites. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no, I did not ruin any flying sites. How does the best pilot in the world who's never been injured make the sport look bad compared to a dead body in the freaking field? What looks worse? The best pilot in the world who's never been injured, who makes the sport look awesome, or dead people laying in the field with blood everywhere? It's just freaking retarded. There's absolutely no reason for it. So if you're getting into the sport, yes, it is the coolest thing on the planet. But that's only if you get a flat top paramotor specifically by name, that one and only that one has the safety features and safety updates. No other paramotor has the safety updates. If there was three of them, I'd go, okay, get this one, this one, or this one. But it doesn't work that way. There's only one. For gliders, there's lots of certified gliders. So as long as you get a certified glider and you use it with certified height hook in points, then you're, you should have pretty good safety. The, uh, the Dominator is probably safer, but you know it's not at like a life and death difference if you get another beginner certified class rated wing. But if you hook that certified wing into a total piece of crap like a mini plane with hook in points up above your head, then you just threw all your certifications right out the window. All that work to make that glider spin and stall resistant just went right out the pooper because you hooked it to a unit like an air conception and you just don't know what the freak you're doing and no crumple zone. There's just no reason whatsoever for people to be dying left and right in the sport. That is very, very upsetting. Especially we were just talking to the guy. We were actually staying in the same tent with the guy sitting, our chairs were sitting in the same tent. And it's like you got the best pilot in the world right there and you don't ask advice. You don't ask for help. Hey, how do I do this? What am I doing? You know, what do I need to do to stay safe? It's just like, uh, okay. You know, if I saw the best pilot in the world, I, I might be tempted to go up and see if I couldn't learn something from them. But no. So many just go around and talk trash and you try and help them and they just go on and on making up lies, pretending you kick birds, and pretending you buy up shelter dogs, and fighting to the death, and quoting all these absurd lies that are just retarded. I mean, seriously, are you just an idiot? I mean, you can see skill, skill is skill. Even if I bought up shelter dogs and fight them to the death, it doesn't negate the skill, even though I don't own a dog, so it's completely stupid, but it doesn't negate the skill and the validity of the experience. You gotta be a little bit smarter than the average stump. At Super Training, we do everything we can to make the sport look good. We do not put you in the sky until you get a solid level of real control of that glider. Until you can be sure you're not gonna stall that glider because you're just over controlling it. You have to build that feel through hours and hours of practice. And if you don't get there, you don't freaking fly. So if you go through super training, it's not the class where you're guaranteed to get in the air. It's the class where you're guaranteed to be trained properly or you won't be put into the air. It's that simple. And yeah, it can be frustrating if you just went through 10 days of training and you still didn't get flying. But dang, you gotta say a big thank you to a guy who has enough integrity to you know, make those hard calls and say, look, man, I know you've been working hard, but the skills aren't there yet. 
I'd love to sell you gear, but I can't yet. It's You're not there yet. We're not going to put you in the air if you don't have that solid level of skill. Where you get the Blackhawk scammers chucking people out of there with no training whatsoever on the absolute worst garbage gear that so many people have been seriously injured and killed on. I mean, a guy walks up and he's missing four fingers. He's like, yeah, I bought a Fresh Breeze. I'm so smart. And you're like, what the freak are you, why? Where in your brain did you get that it's you know a good idea to get units that have never been updated for safety in 30 years? There is no logical, rational brain computation to put that together. It doesn't work that way. You either get a setup that's designed to help save your butt, or you don't, period. It's not rocket science. It's one plus one is two. It's protection from the prop. Let's not chop our fingers off. Okay, let's create a really strong cage that uses Kevlar netting. So it's lighter than other paramotors, but it's also 100 times stronger. That's not rocket science. It's simple logic, simple reason. It's really hard to comprehend, but you know, people have the right, and I'm all for freedom. People have the right to choose to be idiots or geniuses. They can either have the wisdom to listen to people that know what they're doing, or they could be an idiot and go out and buy crap. And that's great, that's a good thing. Look at Canada. They came up with licenses. Now you are required to get a license from the very people who are incompetent. They're the same people that the licenses are supposedly trying to protect you from. So now you're required to get a license from people who chuck you into the air without even the slightest comprehension of the sport or ability to control the glider. So no, licensing is not the way to go. It's a simple matter of education. You know, I'll share the truth. I'll tell you how it really is. I'll show you through hundreds and hundreds of videos through statistics, nobody's ever died on a flat top, but then it's up to you to make that choice. Do you want to buy from the scammer who tells every lie and talks crap, or do you want to buy from the guy who has the skills and backs it up with a lifetime of never even being injured? It's not rocket science. It's just the way it goes. So I refuse to allow death after death after death to bring me down and mess up my fun all because they chose poorly and unwisely. It's the way it goes.